Hello YouTube and welcome to this video brought to you by Rebel Pets. So we previously done a video about the unboxing of a canister filter, the Sobo 650F. In today's video we're going to do how to maintain a canister filter and how to clean your canister filter properly when to clean it, how to clean it. Oh yeah, and make sure if you haven't watched that video yet, the unboxing of the canister water, click here to check it out. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to disconnect your power. Okay, after you've done that, you want to close your valves just to prevent any leakage. Then you slowly start to disconnect them by undoing the valves. This is just a turn connector. Uh, we do also sell these connectors if they break because it does happen quite often if you turn too hard. Uh, you sometimes get a leak on this uh, elbow here that you connect it to. What we used to do is we connect it with threading tape before or plumber's tape and then that prevents it or helps it to seal more correctly. So you just hold this and undo this gets looser and looser it is quite messy so usually you want to have a towel near hand and also get a bucket to clean your canister for the media inside so now that we have our bucket we're just gonna set this aside we use the towel just to clean everything around just to get the water up from the floor so now we're gonna take the outlet of the tank which is going to be the inlet of the canister filter and we're going to take that and fill up the bucket this bucket we're going to use to clean the, the filter media the reason we're using tank water is we don't want chlorine inside because chlorine always kills bacteria so we just want to clean that out um, that's basically the only reason you use tank water and also then you keep your bacteria which stops you from killing your cycle otherwise you need to wait another week and then you're gonna get ammonia spikes and that's not good but we're gonna do a whole video about that in just a, a few days so stay tuned for that please oh yeah and by the way guys we decided we're gonna build a fish room right? <laughs> so stay tuned for that okay so now we're outside just set the camera up here to show you guys how we're gonna open the canister filter so you want to clip the two clips on the side up and then the two clips the opposite side uh, it is a bit gonna it is gonna stick because there's a, a vacuum inside but if you open that just let all of the water come out of the canister filter head which is the top part of the canister filter it is also sealed off by a big o-ring so that is what cause the the vacuum inside so after we, we let the water drain out we're going to start taking out the, the, back, the media in the packets or the containers and we're going to rinse that in the bucket but first you want to fix your impeller so you want to clean this because if there's a little piece of algae or debris it's not going to work as well so you want to clean that in a bucket of water you want to take the o-ring that's on top of the, the plastic part on top that seals the, the o-ring in part in place you want to take that out so you want to clean that off in the bucket of water and you want to seal it again in place so your impeller can work perfectly otherwise you're going to do the whole canister filter you're going to close off your canister filter you're going to plug it in and start going to switch on and you're going to be like what the heck then you're going to need to open it again clean it again and that's that's not a, a like a progress a process to go through again and again and again so yeah i'm just making sure it's secure uh, you don't want the the cover let's say it's the impeller cover you don't want to, it to be too tight otherwise the impeller is not going to be able to go in a circular motion and that's going to stop the canister filter from working or starting at least so now i'm just going to start off the buckets first i'll take off the the o-ring uh, which mounts the canister filter head into the circular pipe in the containers now i'm going to take the containers and just clean this up by dropping it into the water and pulling it up and dropping it pulling it up this makes sure there's a nice water flow through the the container and that pulls out the bacteria 
and then afterwards I'm just going to take the filter floss or the sponge and uh, also squish that out to clean it a bit um, you can see I'm using ceramic rings there it's basically the best bacteria you can grow on is on ceramic rings I think in a canister filter and you can do that on planter tanks because uh, it's only carbon activated carbon which which kills plants or disadvantages plants but then I just drop the ceramic rings out and I'll take the filter floss or the filter wool I just take it and I like a sponge cleaning a sponge filter I just take it drop it into water and then just rinse it a bit just to get the dirt out you'll see the water turning quite brown and murky very quickly um, this is all good bacteria remember it's like when you have bacteria or bio balls this process happens by itself because it knocks into each other and knocks all of the bacteria off so that's basically what happens but now I'm just going to finish the canister filter I don't want to bore you guys too long um, after I've done that I just take the water throw that out and then just start packing once again with the clean filter pads and then put some more ceramic rings in there the one is in a sachet the other one is open just to get some some good off surface air and just experimenting a bit but that's about it eh? so after I packed it you need to pack it in securely in the canister filter but you need to make sure that the canister filter containers are correctly on top of each other because if they're not level or if they're not stick to the way they're supposed to be there's going to be a slight difference in the balance and that's going to cause the canister filter head to clip on um, in the wrong position it's going to be skew so and if that happens then the water usually pours out with the o-ring because the o-ring needs to be perfectly in place to so make sure you pack the, the containers nicely so they fit onto each other and then if you put them in the canister filter they should also fit nicely that's why you get the white lid which goes on top of the containers to uh, prevent anything from floating up and drifting in the water there and you get a black o-ring to seal there as well so you get some good flow rate so the water is directly directed downwards and then push from the bottom up through to the top and then pumped by the impeller back into the tank after it's been filtered uh, we've packed a filter wall at the bottom and the top of the media because the bottom is a mechanical and then the media is biological and then the top is just a, a play it safe for the last mechanical but also some biological filtration to get some surface air we have no chemical filtration in this in this canister filter then you can see me placing it down correctly pushing it tight and then just <coughs> clipping it back together so now you see I'm connecting it again make sure uh, it's connected tightly if you um, secure your fittings in there it could be quite a mission So what you want to do is you want to set your canister filter right before you add water because after there's water it's difficult to move so you want to set your canister filter down take your fittings remember the inlet must be where the inlet is of the canister filter and the outlet of the canister filter must be connected to the outlet it is going to be switched around in your tank you're going to have an outlet in your tank but it's going to be an inlet in a uh, canister filter. You're going to have an inlet in your tank, but it's going to be an outlet of your canister filter if you understand that. It's quite simple. So, yeah, I'm just fitting it securely. That's basically it. Nothing much is happening here. And remember to hold it tight and make sure it grips onto that plumber's tape to prevent any leakages. We've, we've dealt with quite a bit of canister filters leaking. You do get a hang of it sometimes. You do know how to fix it. Uh, it is a, a general thing that happens. But make sure to screw it tight, but not too tight. Because it actually releases in the middle and then you don't want to, it to release too much because then it's just going to turn out in the middle of the whole connector valve fitting so that's, that could be a problem so now I'm just making sure it's secure don't make sure there's no kinks in your pipes the 
pubs not in different orders it should be fully organized before you add any water to the system because this is the the best place where you can manipulate the, the pipes and the fittings and the canister filter and whatever without having a leak once it's up and running I would recommend not um, manipulating it because then there could be uh, easy space for some error to happen and you connected after you connect it you hear the impeller going there's usually an air bubble you can prime it but I don't I don't prefer to prime it because that puts pressure on the canister filter um, when you push it every time so I prefer to put it on to plug it in, plug it out, plug it in, plug it out to get the water flowing. Usually I just uh, suck at the one end or if your pipe is full of water you just open the tap and it pushes it in through there. Um, then you plug it in, plug it out, plug it in, plug it out and then you can play with the valves to try and get the, the siphon going and then the impeller will eventually go. This is a video of off, this is a photo of after to show you guys what it looked like. This is a photo of before, show you guys how it looked like. And there's the canister filter. So it's a different 700, easy to maintain, easy to clean. And as you guys can see here, the water is already clearing up. So I really just want to say thank you for watching guys.